happy morning students so in the last video we studied about the measurement of the basic quantities and we also studied that in measurement we are having two types so one is a direct measurement another one is a indirect measurement what do you mean by direct measurement so the thing which can go directly and we can able to measure using some instruments means we can call that method as what a direct measurement so what is indirect measurement so the thing which cannot be measured directly in our prevent means we call that as a indirect method so we learn that in our past video right so in that we also learn that the measurement of length in a direct method so we learn about the screw gas and a bobbin caliper so using screw gas how the diameter or thickness of a wire can be measured so using a bobbin caliper how we measure the inner diameter depth of a thing so how we are directly measuring the object we study and also we study in the indirect method we study about the triangular method so in order to find the distance or a height of a building or a height of a tree in order to study about what the triangular method we call that as a triangle indirect method right so we all study that in our past video so in this video today we are going to study about the parallax method radar method and we are going to learn only one method but other methods like laser sonar echo all have come under the same category and the same formula we have to use only the different notation in radar we use what radio waves in laser we use laser waves in sonar we use ultrasonic waves and echo method is a normal voice right so that is the difference between these things but the method of detecting and finding the calculations of a distance is remains the same so today we are going to learn about the parallax method radar method and also we are going to learn about the measurement of mass and measurement of that let us start Right. Therefore, we can say that theta is a parallax angle, 
and B is the basis, which is just a distance between two things, two observation points, right? So X is the distance between them. So can you able to understand clearly about parallax? A parallax is nothing but a shift in the position of an object when viewed with the two eyes, keeping one eye close at a time is known as what? A parallax. Is it right? Yes? Can you able to see that? So you have done that? Yes, good. Right? So, with the help of this, we are going to calculate the distance. Distance of a far away position. First, we learn a formula. How to do it? Right? So, we know this. This is like an arc length. So, arc length means for a small one. If I take a circle, if I take a, if I draw a circle, so from the circle, we know that point is C. Then, this is a radius R. Then, if I draw another one, this will make me one arc. Right? We call this as a arc. Like you're a, a triangle, cake piece or a piece of this, right? So this is a arc. So if I want to find this arc length, so it can be simply found by the help of what? We can say that it is nothing but it is an angle e to the radius. So what is the formula? If any arc length, we use this wherever we need. We use it in most derivations, right? If anything is in the form of a small arc, we we'll say that the arc length will be equal to what? Angle into radius. This is arc length. This one is arc length. The one is a curve is arc length and radius. Angle into the radius. Right? So we are going to do the same formula here. We are going to consider this to be a small as a part of a circle. So this is a small part of a circle. So we are saying this LR is going to be our arc length and theta be the same or O be the center of the circle and this is x will be the radius of a circle. Therefore, our length will be represented basis equal to the parallax angle into distance. So we can write a formula b is equal to theta into x. What we want to find? We want to find the parallax angle. So theta is equal to what? b divided by x. If I want to find the distance of x, we know that theta. Then we can say that what b is equal or x is equal to b by theta. So with this formula we can easily able to find the parallax angle and we can easily able to find it. So this parallax method is also helping me to determine the diameter of a moon. Right? So next we are going to start it. Let us look through this video for our more knowledge about parallax. So we know that parallax helped me to study the distance between far away objects. So it can be earth to moon or earth to some other planet. Let us take an example of a tree now. So we are going to stand in front of a tree. And we are going to observe the tree through our eye. One eye. So it makes an angle theta one. And we are going to observe it through another eye. That is theta two. The distance between this theta one and theta 2 we call it as a basis B. This distance we know it. And we say that the angle suspended by it is a parallactic angle. So if I draw a curve with respect to the tree as a center, so we'll get a circle. And the theta parallactic angle theta 1, theta 2, everything will give me an angle 180 degree. So remember we have to use in terms of radian. So this distance will be the radius of the circle from the observer and the object. We want to calculate that. So we know about our arc formula. What it is? arc is equal to or angle is equal to arc by radius. So here angle is the parallactic angle theta. Arc is the basis B and the radius here is the D. Therefore the equation will be theta is equal to B by D. If we rearrange this equation D will be equal to B by theta. So with the help of this, we can easily able to find the distance between the observer and a tree. 
split us, replace us to the earth. So instead of our 2i, it will be the 2 observer position, which will be opposite, that is diametrically opposite in it. So we know the diameter of earth, that is the basis of it. That we represents theta 1 and theta 2. So theta 1 and theta 2 can be observed through some astronomical telescopes. So instead of the tree, we can replace some other planet. Let it be Saturn or so. So that makes the same angle, parallactic angle, theta. So the same method can be followed to find the distance of our Earth to a faraway planet, Saturn.
problem related to the sparlactic member. What is the problem related problem now? The moon suspended at an angle of the moon suspended at an angle of one degree fifty five seconds at the baseline equal to the diameter of the earth. And they are asking us to find what is the distance of the moon from the earth. Right? Again, we are going to calculate the same thing. We are going to calculate what we are going to calculate the distance of the moon from the earth. Then they have given a parameter what they found that the radius of the earth is given to be equal to six point four into ten power six meter. They are given the radius of the earth equal to what? So you have to know the standard value. In many sense, we have to substitute the value. Sometimes they will give the value. Sometimes they will not give the value. So we have to know the value. Radius of the earth is equal to six point four into ten power six meter. Right? Then angle has been given to be equal to what? One degree fifty five seconds. While we are using an angle, we have to use it in terms of a radian. We should not use it in terms of a degree or a second. Therefore, we want to convert this one degree fifty five second in terms of a radian. How can we convert? We know that one degree equal to sixty. Like if I add sixty with fifty five, becomes to be what? One one fifty more. Right? So this is a minute. We want to convert it to second. So that can say that one one five into sixty. It will becomes to be second. Then I want to convert this degree in terms of what? Second in terms of radian. One radian or one second radian is equal to what? Four point eight five into ten power minus six. It's the standard value, right? So one second will be equal to what? One point four eight five into ten power minus six radian. So degree has been converted in terms of minute, and minute has been converted in terms of second. And from the second value, we know that one second is given to be equal to four point eight five into ten power minus six radian. Therefore, if I multiply everything, we get an answer equal to what? Three point three four into ten power minus two radian. We have converted the angle in terms of degree, in terms of what? Radian. So every problem. We have to check that the given data should be in the formal one. That is given in a fundamental units as well as the angle should be represented in terms of radian for the purpose, right? Then what is the formula? You know, x is equal to your parallax formula is what? X is equal to basis by theta, b by theta. B has been given. What is the b value? Given? They are given to be the base that is equal to the diameter of the earth, right? What is But we have to take the basis to be what diameter of the earth. So diameter of the earth means what? It is twice the area. So it is two into six point four into ten power six. Since it is a diameter, we are taking two times of the area. So two into six point four into ten power six. And theta value normally we have measured in terms of area. It is three point three four into ten power minus two. If I divide these two, we will get the answer is equal to what? Three point eight three into ten power eight meter. So that is the thing, right? So this is a method in which we can easily able to form the value of what? A distance star value, distance of a star, a distance of a moon also. So that method is called as what? Parallax method. So we have discussed about triangle method and a parallax method. Triangle method is helping to find about the distance over a height of a building or a tree or any tower. And parallelic method help me to find about the distance of a star or a moon or a planet, which is uh, value equal to 100 light years. So apart from 100 light years, we are not able to do it because the angle theta will be what very very negligible to it. So we are not able to find or use the parallelic method more than 100 light years distance, right? So only we are having a shifting in our position of an observation, and we are finding this value. The next thing we will go for what radar method. Now we are going to see the last method for indirect. What is that? It is the radar method. So we can say radar method, laser pulse method, echo method, sonar method. All comes under the same categories. So go in one one thing we are using different. In radar method we are using radio waves to send and receive the signal. In laser pulse method, we are using laser beams to send and receive the signals. In echo method, we are using the sound signals. And in sonar, we are using ultrasonic waves. So in each method, we are using the different things. But the method of doing and measuring things 
remains the same. Right. In radar, what do you mean by radar? Radar is nothing but it is a radio reduction and ranging. So radio is what? It is a radio reduction and ranging. So you see this like right? This is a transmitter. Transmitter stands for a antenna. Antenna means what? It is a thing which receives and transmits the signals. So what we are going to do? So we are going to transmit and receive a signal. So from this, a radio waves will be sent to a distance also. Let me take the distance object to be mass. We we'll take just what mass. So from a transmitter from the earth, we are sending a radio waves, and the radio waves falls on the mass, and it gets reflected, and it gets what reflected, and is again received by the same antenna. So antenna will act as both as a transmitter as well as what a receiver. So now what we are going to calculate? We are going to calculate the time interval between the transmission and receiver. Right, so the time interval for from Earth to Mars and Mars to again to the Earth. So we are going to measure the time interval. From the time interval, we can easily able to find the distance of a Mars from our Earth. Then what is the formula we can use? You will learn this basic formula in a derived quantities. We have learned the formula. The speed is equal to distance traveled by time taken. So speed will be equal to what? A distance traveled by time taken. We want to calculate the distance, distance of a mass from our earth. Therefore, distance will be equal to speed into time taken. So we are rearranging this equation. It becomes to be equal to what? Distance is equal to speed into time taken. We represent distance in terms of v and speed in terms of v. Velocity or thing we represent in terms of what? V. Then time taken here, we are time taken usually it will represent by d. But what we are doing? We are dividing it by 2. Why we are dividing it by 2? The distance is only 1. But the signal has been sent and it has been received. So 2 times it has been traveled the same path. In order to calculate a final one, we are saying that the time taken will be divided by 2. Therefore, distance is equal to velocity in the time taken divided by 2 is a formula for measuring the distance of object using what? Radar method. For laser pulse method also, for sonar method and echo method, all mother will have the same formula. The distance of uh, any distance planet will be equal to velocity into time taken by 2. Why we are dividing it by 2? Because the same signal has been sent to one foot. So it has been uh, from the earth to Mars and Mars to Earth. The same distance has been travelled by 2. So I divided by 2 only, it will give an actual time taken between what? Earth and the Mars. Right? Now we will do a problem related to it. So listen to the problem. It is example 1.3. What they are saying? A radar signal is a beam towards a planet and its echo is received and by 7 minutes. So it has been a radio signal has been sent to a planet and it has been reflected back to the time of what? A 7 minutes later. Right? So time taken is what? 7 minutes. Then if the distance between the planet and the earth is found to be equal to 6.3 into 10 power 10 meter lengths, they are asking us to calculate the speed of the signal. Right? Therefore, distance has been given as what? 6.3 into 10 power 10 meter. So it has been given in front of the lengths. There is no issue. Then time is given in minute. But what is the fundamental element of time? Yes, it is second. Therefore, we have to convert minute into second. In order to convert minute into second, 7 into 60 second. Then what is the formula we know? We know the formula distance is equal to, you know the formula what? Distance is equal to velocity into time taken by 2. But here they are asking us to calculate the velocity. Therefore, we have to rearrange it. So it becomes to be 2d. So 2 into distance divided by time taken will be the velocity formula and the rearrange. Right? So what is the parameter? D parameter we know. Time parameter we know. Substituted this 2 into 6.3 into 10 power 10 divided by. What is the time taken will be? 7 into 60. Right? 7 into 60. If I solve, we get the answer will be equal to 3 into 10 power 10. What is the unit of velocity? It is meter per Therefore, velocity can be equal to what? 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. It is nothing but the speed of a light. Right? So, that is the thing they have been given. It is a very simple problem. You can easily work it out. They can give any term and they will ask any term to calculate. 
Usually this data method is has been used to find what distance. If they give velocity and the time, we can easily able to find the value of what distance of a distance planet. So, so in that measurement of length, we are having what both direct method and indirect method. So in direct method, we use what a screw gun and Bernier caliper to measure a small distance. And in the largest method, we have found triangular method, the parallax method, and we have found about the last one is radar method. So all these things is a very important one, and each individual thing will be your good back final questions for you. The next we will go for a measurement of mass and time because we are going for what measurement of basic quantity. So these things cover another measurement of length. Now we have to go for what measurement of mass and the time. Range of lengths. As we already discussed, the range of length varies from a very smaller objects to a very large mass. Right? If I say about a very small length, it is nothing but it is a size of a nucleus. It is 10 power minus 14 meter. Then if we want to say about a very large one, it is nothing but it is our entire universe which is 10 power 26 meter. So apart from that, we are going to see about the various objects and its size and its distance. First one, the size of a proton. It is nothing but 10 power minus 15 meter. Size of an atomic nucleus. It is 10 power minus 14 meter. Size of a hydrogen atom. It is 10 power minus 10 meter. So we can go on saying this. So here are the some other examples for you. These are the various ranges of length. So length can be very large and length can be very small. And some special length units as we already discussed are Fermi. One Fermi is 10 power minus 15 meter. It is helped me to measure the nuclear size. Angstrom. 1 Angstrom equal to 10 power minus 10 meter. Usually wavelengths are measured using this unit. Next is astronomical unit. 1 U. Its value is 1.496 into 10 power 11 meter. Then light here, 1 light here is equal to 9.46 into 10 power 15 meter. What is light here? So 1 light here is nothing but it is a distance travelled by the light with a velocity of 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second in vacuum. That is in 1 year. The next is pass second. Pass second takes a value of what? 3.08 into 10 power 16 meter. One pass second is the distance of a point in space from where the radius of Earth's orbit substance an angle of one arc second. We call that as what? Pass second. We are going to learn about the next base quantity that is mass. The measurement of mass. We already know that mass can be measured using a SI unit kilogram. It has been nothing but what is the standard definition? It is what? It is nothing but it is a prototype of platinum iridium alloy which has been kept in International Bureau of Weights and Measures and from there it has been distributed to our entire world. The standard mass that is one cage. In India, the standard prototype of kilogram weight has been given through our National Physics Laboratory, which is located in New Delhi. Now we'll learn about the measurement of mass of a common object. If we go to a shop, anything can be measured using a beam balance or electronic balance. We can call it as a common balance too. So shopkeeper measures the equal weight through this common balance or electronic balance. If we go for a measurement of a larger objects that is our entire universe 
planets, stars and huge mass, this everything can be measured using a method called gravitational method. The method of measurement of mass of a smaller objects. If we say smaller objects, what are they? Atoms, molecules and, and its inter particles. Everything has small in mass. And we measure it by a special unit called atomic mass unit. Usually it is represented by symbol U. So one atomic mass unit is nothing but 1 by 12th of a mass of a carbon 12 atom including the mass of an electron. So it takes a value of 1.66 into 10 power minus 27 kg. So that is one atomic mass unit. It is measured using mass spectrograph. Range of masses. It ranges from a smaller one to a larger one. First, it is electron. That is the smallest one. Its mass is 10 power minus 30 kg. And the larger one is our entire universe. It is 10 power 55 kg. So here are the sum of the reference for your Thing, that is ranges of masses of different objects. So let us go through that. Let us study the, the third base quantity that is time. Measurement of time. So we know that the, from the past olden days, various inventions has been invented, right? So we tablet it. So in 1666, we have a universal law of gravitation and 1879, electrical bulb, 1905, special relativity and 1935, it is neutron and 1986, superconductor. We call them as a events. In practice, we'll have a game or we can have a race. So it can be a running race or uh, anything else. So from a start line, we'll start our thing and we'll say that any persons, so we'll reach us the final line first, right? We calculate the time taken by the athletes to reach the final position. So each person will take different time to reach the final goal. So here we are giving a time of 2 minutes 16 seconds. So it cannot be measured through our ordinary watch. We have to measure it by the help of a special type of a time called stopwatch. So top watch help us to calculate the second and minute in a very accurate manner so which has been used in our all athletic properties. Various types of measurements of time which has been followed in our olden days. Example, horse class, pendulum, sundial. So these are the different time procedures which has been followed from the olden days. So now we are following the stopwatch or which has been developed from an element we call as cesium element. So cesium 55. So it is called a cesium clock. So with that cesium clock 133 atom, so number of transition which is going is said to be calculated as a time. The time needed for some vibrations of radiations corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine lines of a ground state of cesium-133 atom is found to be one second. So they have taken this as a basic fundamental derivations or a definitions for one second. So all time will have a to and fro motion to calculate its own time. So that is cesium atomic clock. Now let us see some of the 
things which is used in our time. So 1. The uncertainty of an atomic clock. That is 1 into 10 power minus 13. Number of second in a year is 3.15 into 10 power 7 second. Loss or gain of an atomic clock will be 3.15 into 10 power 7 into 10 power 13 means it is nothing but 3 microsecond per year. So this has been preserved in our National Physics Laboratory which is located in our New Delhi. So these are the sum of her other events and its time interval for our reference. So go through that.